So today we will be covering calculations using molar volumes of gases. Now I know what you're thinking, can this day get any better? Well, probably not. So hang around and we we'll look at how to use chemical equations to calculate volumes of gases and how to use the ideal gas law. Side note, it's called the ideal gas law because it applies to ideal gases. And if you decide to take chemistry beyond A level, you'll be told they don't exist. To be fair though, many gases behave almost ideally, especially at high temperatures and low pressures. Okay, so you will have learnt in GCSE that one mole of any gas has a volume of 24 cubic decimeters at room temperature and pressure. This volume is called the molar volume of a gas, and the value can be calculated by using the ideal gas law equation shown in the box below. Let's rearrange the equation and substitute the values of temperature for 298 Kelvin and pressure for 101,325 Pascals. This is the actual value, however you will use a simplified value of 100,000 in your exams. This leaves us with 0 0.0244 joules over pascals. Work equals force times distance, so newtons times meters. Pascals become newtons per square meter. Cancel the newtons and we are left with cubic meters. Multiply by 1,000 to get the answer in cubic decimeters and approximate to 24. There, that wasn't so bad now was it? So here they want us to calculate the volume of gas at room temperature and pressure produced when the following reaction goes to completion. 2 moles of carbon monoxide have a volume of 48 cubic decimeters, whereas 1 mole of oxygen has a volume of 24 cubic decimeters. 2 moles of carbon monoxide react with 1 mole of oxygen to produce 2 moles of carbon dioxide, which have a volume of 48 cubic decimeters. Subtract the volumes of reactants and add the volume of carbon dioxide to get your answer. Now if the pressure inside the container was doubled, the volumes of reactants would be halved to 24 and 12 respectively, but so would the volume of carbon dioxide produced as it is inside the same container. We do not need to use the ideal gas law to convert the volumes into moles as the ratio remains unchanged. Just to make it more obvious, let's assume the pressure was multiplied by 24, so one mole of gas at this pressure would have a volume of 1 cubic decimeter. In this case, 2 cubic decimeters of carbon monoxide would react with 1 cubic decimeter of oxygen to give 2 cubic decimeters of carbon dioxide. The ratio can be seen more clearly here, 2 moles of gas react with 1 mole of gas to make 2 moles of gas. In this question they want us to calculate the volume of steam produced at 200 degrees C when the following reaction goes to completion, starting with 30 cubic decimeters of hydrogen and 15 cubic decimeters of oxygen. Now I'm not going to waste my time calculating how many moles there are. If two volumes of hydrogen react with one volume of oxygen, then 30 react with 15 to produce 30 of steam, with no reactants remaining. Now in this case they want us to calculate the total volume of gas in the reaction mixture when the reaction goes to completion. As you can see, oxygen is in excess this time, so 5 cubic decimeters will be left unreacted. Add these to the volume of steam produced, and you have your answer. Now this question is as unpleasant as they can get. Similar question to the previous one, but with an equilibrium thrown in. You may recognise this reaction from the Harbour process, which has a yield for the forward reaction of around 15%. First, we should establish that the limiting reactant is the hydrogen. However, only 15% of it is used up, so 9 cubic decimeters are removed from the total, besides 3 of nitrogen, producing 6 cubic decimeters of ammonia. Add the volumes up to get the total volume of gas in the reaction mixture after reaching equilibria. Impressed? Kinda hard not to be. Please feel free to replay this example and take your time to enjoy it properly. Ok, let's have a go at some past paper questions. I'll give you 30 seconds to work out the answer. Ok, so the limiting reactant chlorine is used up. 25 cubic centimetres of hydrogen are left as excess, and 50 cubic centimetres of hydrogen chloride are produced. Add these up, and the answer is A. Same again, 30 seconds starting now.
limiting reactant propane is used up, 100 cubic centimetres of oxygen are left as excess, 300 cubic centimetres of carbon dioxide are produced, and water at room temperature and pressure is a liquid and therefore does not contribute to the total gas volume. The answer is B. Finally, I'd like to finish off with something a bit more challenging, a cheeky little four mark question that was thrown into the June 2020 Unit 5 exam. They want us to calculate the percentage of methane in a 25 cubic centimetre mixture of methane and ethane that requires 65 cubic centimetres of oxygen for complete combustion. So straight away, I'm going to write the equations for the complete combustion of methane and ethane. Now I don't know how many cubic centimetres of methane there are, so I'm going to call them x. Therefore, I'm going to need 2x cubic centimetres of oxygen. Same for ethane, which I will label y, which means I need 3.5y cubic centimetres of oxygen. I know the volumes of methane and ethane add up to 25, and the volumes of oxygen add up to 65. By solving this system of equations, I get x equals 15 cubic centimetres. In other words, the volume of methane in the mixture. Divide this by the total volume of the mixture, and multiply by 100 to get 60% as the final answer. Well, I hope you found that useful. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and let's face it, what's not to like about it? Until next time.